Buddha on this computer. Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone again. Hare Krishna. Now we're officially recording. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. And welcome to our reading of some of some Kabukamudi. And just get some context. We are on part two, just coming to the end. Now, part two consists of four subjects. We go the definition of sadhana, circular causality. We, we read about that. Questioning further, questioning the definition further. And now we're just on the appearance of Bhava. So, two pages, and then we enter into part three, which is the Sankhya of Sankalpa. So, interesting title, but all will be revealed when we get there. Okay. So, let's stop the prayers to Shri Prabhupada. Namo Om Vishnu Bhare Krishna Bhistai Bhutale. Shri Mati Bhakti Varanta Swam Dinamani. Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Vishalini. Never say she's Sundavani, Pashtatari Sadhana. Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nitananda. She had waited to Kadat Haj, she was sitting over a back to Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare you long, Hare you long, 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 Hare Hare. Okay, so according to my book, we are on page 149. And the beginning, again, the subject is the appearance of Baba, or the appearance of um, love, a ray of prema. This is our goal as sadhakas. This is what we are ultimately aspiring for. Bhav. To... And we are... Okay, those who have the book, um, 149. And anyone like to begin reading? I can. Yes, yeah, so it begins clearly when we speak. Okay. If you look, one, two. Yeah, one, four, one. nine. So, yeah. So we're coming to the end of this chapter. We might not make it today to write to the end, but let's see how we go. Okay. Everyone's ready? Right. Yes, we are ready. Okay, ready, steady. For the nectar. Yes. No. Hurry, hurry. So where did we, what did we get up to? I was just thinking. Clearly when we speak. Yeah, yeah, oh. I've got there. I was just thinking. <laughs> thinking that, what were we discussing before? Well, this, yeah, the subject oh. is, it's oh. going on from the last chapter. Uh -huh. And speaking about the dynamics of the appearance of Baba. Yeah. And it was established beforehand, and Maharaj is established again in the beginning of the Diff chapter, that its appearance is not, in one sense, has is not down to us. Uh -huh. It's down to other factors, which will be described here. No. You could say in Mercy. Is mercy. it mercy, Muli Prabhu, or not? It's mercy, but the details of that mercy will be given here. Okay. Exactly thank you. what that means, because that's quite a general word. It, it, it can be a general word. So Maharaj really breaks it down and describes what that mercy actually is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, ready? Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Clearly, speak of Baha Bhakti as its own cause. Prema Bhakti is also inferred. Aesthetic love is but a spark of Prema. And so the awakening of Bhav may be occasioned either by aesthetic or by love. Commenting on Bhakti Rasamita Sindh, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur writes, this Bhav Bhakti is not obtained by any means of sadhana. Rather, by continued performance of Shravanam, Kirtanam, and other angas of bhakti, when such bhakti attains maturity, it automatically cleanses all misgivings from the heart of the sadhaka, at which time bhav bhakti manifests itself in the transparent heart by the mercy of Sri Krishna or his devotees. Thakur Bhakti will okay. not 
mm. also confirms this that bhav appears by its own will. One cannot attain that eternal perfection by his own effort. In the beginning, the stage called sadhana is manifested in the heart and persists until the time that eternal perfection, bhav, appears of its own accord. It should be understood that one cannot force the appearance of aesthetic devotion. It must come of its own will. Yeah, could I just pause there? Because yeah. I, was, I was reading through this just before, and it kind of um, <clears throat> dawned on me. I mean, that's why, in that matter, how much, how, how we go about our devotional activities at Japa or our Pacific services, um, we may not always taste what bhava, which is loving ecstasy. Yeah. Because what we do is not enough to invoke it. Yeah, so it's, so you could say, well, what's the point of doing anything? <laughs> it, well, the, um, the verse from the, the, the Vishnaf's commentary on Bhaktim Brasmata Sindhu, which we read on page 149, he describes that we can just clear the dirt by attentive hearing and chanting and um, and um, and sincere service and in essence that will invoke mercy yeah that will invoke mercy but when that happens it's all down to the lord it's not mechanical in in any way yeah very much yeah. it's not mechanical in any way so that yeah. Yes, today I was thinking the same thing, you know, endeavor and mercy, right? And I was thinking that, um, okay, we can just perform, uh, do endeavor, but we're going to get bhakti only when it's <clears throat> Krishna's mercy is there. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking that, uh, okay, then the mercy, how does the mercy come? Yeah, that can come in a number of ways. In in, in essence, it can come directly from Krishna. Mm -hmm. In essence, it from Krishna within the heart. It mm -hmm. can come from the Guru. It can come from the Holy Name. It can come from a variety of places. Yeah, we shall read about that. Oh, we'll read about that. Okay. Read about that. Yeah, that's just coming. Yeah. Okay. Right, sorry, I cut you off from reading there, so you can continue. No, no, that's, I, I want, it's good, we can yeah. understand. Okay. We'll okay. To further understand. To further understand how Bhavabhakti manifests, appear, appears of its own will, or awakens in the heart, it is instructive to review how authorities define Bhakti. Bhava. 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 In his teaching of, to Sanatana Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has explained that bhav is a continuous, continuous, con, oh, a constitutional, constitutional part of every living entity. He says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Shavanandi Pure love of Krishna is eternally established in the heart of the living entity. It is not something to be gained by another soul. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, that love natur naturally awakens. Shri Prabhupada cites this verse to emphasize that bhav is a permanent feature of all jivas, already there in the heart of everyone. Due to forgetfulness, bhav is covered, but by perfection, Perfecting the chanting and hearing process, it can be aroused. Where is bhav? Where is bhav aroused? In the jiva itself, and it is aroused because bhav is already present within the soul. It is eternal aesthetic condition, stai bhav, of every living entity, and it manifests by the touch of Krishna's spiritual energy. Krishna confirms this understanding when he calls the jiva his amsa or fragmental part. 
which means that the living entity is also a manifestation of his Swarup Sakti. Unfortunately, because of its minute size, the jiva sometimes falls under the influence of the external potency, Maya. The living entity in this conditioned world are my eternal fragment path. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. In the struggle with the material energy, the spiritual nature of the soul remains covered, but in contact with the Swarup Shakti, manifesting through pure hearted Vaishnava, the soul's spiritual nature is gradually revived. This means that by sadhana, the influence of the Swarup Shakti latents yeah. in pure devotion service progressively increases in a devotee. Its presence becomes stable at the stage of nishta and increasingly robust at the stage of ruchi and ashakti. The development of this spiritual strength depends on careful practice, primary, primarily in the form of nam sankirtan. And as already discussed, devotees are engaged in pure devotion because the awakening of the surup shakti systematically transforms their bodies. Okay, perhaps we're pause there. Pause for thought, as they say. <laughs> I have a little thought, you know, when, yeah. um, you know, uh, when Maharaj earlier said about walking is already in you, you know, when a child, you're learning to walk. Remember you said that? Yep. Yep. So then you just um, give a hand and the child starts walking. So like Maharaj is saying, Bhav is already within. It just needs to manifest. Yeah. That's quite intriguing is that it's sitting right there with us all the yeah. time <laughs> yeah. because that's our constitutional position as jivas in relationship to krishna that the relationship is actually one of love yeah. but it's covered at the moment so when we sense so in one sense it it's it's aroused by mercy so mercy comes from down, but it's not Baba that's coming down. It's interesting subject, it's not Baba, it's just, it's the mercy which shows us that, that reveals that which is in the heart. That's why when it does, that's why when love of Godhead does arise, it feels, it's very, very natural. And that means it's very spontaneous. It's very natural, it's more natural than any other relationship that we've ever had in the material world. That's why it's so overwhelming for the jiva. And I think we get a sense of that. I mean, I've heard devotees describe this when they, well, at least that was, in a sense, that was my experience, that when I started to come to the temple and started to associate with devotees, I felt I was coming home. And when I said the experience, it felt like I was, I was coming into something which was very natural. It felt like coming home after a long journey. Yeah. It was the place you were already there, so it's just you felt it. Yeah, so in other words, Krishna consciousness is a natural constitutional position is to hear and chant about Krishna and to engage in loving service to him. So that's kind of it, it. As Marge was saying, in page one five one, it it begins this um and this feeling, say it begins at nishta and it increases. This feeling of um, natural or this feeling of a devotion to Krishna, it it becomes because it's it's part of it. It's our constitutional position. But have we forgot it? For millions of years, the Jiva has been had their face to turn away from Krishna and 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 has embraced matter. Yeah. And so therefore it takes some um, digging out. 
it takes some un, it takes some uh, uncovering in the form of hearing and chanting. Okay, a quick a question. Okay, yes. so it's it's already there, right? So we got to fan yes. it to bring it out. So then, what's this fanning? What what do we do to? Well, bring anyone can say what's this fanning. <laughs> What are you doing, my dear? Cat keep on and on and on. The right time will come. It'll sparkle. The fanning is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Parasevanam, Archanam, Varanam, Sakhanam, Yeah. Right. But in one sense, that's quite the that's kind of the easy answer. Yeah. But um Marge will go on to this. I think I'm saying he will go on to describe because he does because I read through the book a couple of times, so I've got some grasp of what's coming. And he describes exactly the nature of the of the hearing and chanting that 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 you have to do. It has to be ekagrata. It has to be very attentive. It has to be very very sincere. And it obviously, it has to be at least be starting on the um, platform of pure practice in other words i'm not doing this to get something in return hmm. yeah, that's the starting point yeah to be on the path of pure devotion so that in itself takes some time that takes purification to actually come to that level but in essence that is in, put, put very succinctly it is through hearing and chanting but Maharaj in this book is he's kind of Digging out, letting us know the details of the application of that, you know. All right. So let's read a bit more. Um, Kunamai, you have your hand up there. If you can hear us, you can unmute and read. Then we're Anupam next, and then Sahachari Mother. Up yet there. One five one, yeah. Yeah. All the uh, readers. All the readers will have by now surmised a general definition of bow. Let us refer to Rupa Goswami's all encompassing and perfect version. Um, when devotional service is executed on the transcendental platform of pure goodness, it is like a sun ray of love for Krishna. At such a time, devotional service causes the heart to be softened by various states and one is then situated in bow emotion. The phrase should sattva vishest atma refers to the living entity at the permanent transcendental stage of pure goodness as described previously. Sud sattva indicates both the Samovit and ladini as well as their most wonderful combination. When these potencies are increasingly concentrated through ecstatic chanting and hearing, they transform, they transform bow into prema and prema into its increasingly elevated stages of perfection, such as man. As bow condenses, it increases and intensifies the desire to please Krishna. A mindset that is natural disposition of his eternal associates. So we just pause there, just to come. Um, welcome to Rupeshwara Nimai Prabhu. He just joined us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Joining us for the first time. Hare Krishna. So, um, Marge is given or Marge is quoted from Rupa Goswami. It's just a, a, a definition of what is bhava. This was this verse here. Sudha Sattva Vishatma. Yeah. So again, we've heard before, it's like a sun ray of love of Krishna. Yeah. And the symptoms, we have described this, we have spoken about this in the nectar devotion readings. Yeah. One's heart is softened by various loving ecstasies. Yeah. And that's one is situated at the Bhava. 
just uh, just 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 for a highlight that it's just a definition of barber and then marge goes on further to describe its development into prema which is the next verse coming up it gives it this is a definition of prema coming up okay so sorry mother I, you can continue reading kunamai uh, readers may take note that the initial stage of bow is not the same as its final stage, like sadhana bhakti, which progresses through a variety of stages. Bhava is first immature, and then by the strength of devotional activities, it systematically matures until its final blossoming into prema. The next phrase, prema sur suryamsu, Samya Bhak indicates that Bhav is like a sun ray of love for Krishna. In the analogy that Prema is the sun and Bhav a ray of sunshine, Rupa Goswami suggests that not long after the faint dawning of Bhav, the glowing sun of Prema appears. The relationship between Bhav and Prema is also described by the Ras Acharya. You can just say the translation if it's easier for you. When that bhava softens the heart completely, becomes endowed with a great feeling of possessiveness in relation to the Lord and becomes very much condensed and intensified, it is called prema, love of God, by learned scholars. As a ray of love, bhava is also transcendental, otherwise how could it draw the happiness of liberation and preview a vision of the Lord? Moreover, it is a constant feature of the Lord's eternal associates. And thus, in a bow shadaka, is, it brings about a mental disposition similar to that of the Vrajvasis. The term Rusubis, Chitta Masarya Krid means that Bao softens the mind with desires for meeting, serving, and cavoting with the Lord. Rushi implies three kinds of tastes. Meeting Krishna, rendering him favorable service, and entering into a friendly relationship. The softening of the mind is a clear distinction between sadhana and bhava bhakti. In the former gross bodily activities are prominent, which in the later are complemented with the addition of subtle mental meditations that result in an intense hankering for perfection. Thakur Bhaktivinod says that Bao Sadhakas usually take shelter of Nam Sankirtan to fulfill their coveted purpose. The last phrase of the definition Atsau Bhav Uchite reiterates that the softening of the heart is called Bhav. That softening of the heart, Masurnya, is specific characteristic of loving devotion, more so than physical acts done either to awaken it or that are consequence of it. Softening of the heart, like the stage of Bhav, is also called bow, and it's defined in the following way. Bows are a variety of conditions of mind produced through a relation between a subject and an object of love that produce transformations of body and senses. Thus, readers may note that the word bow has multiple uses in the Vaishnav theology. It means that the stage of ecstasy material and spiritual emotion, and also a stage of prema. Okay, perhaps we better pause there. Um, Marge is continuing to give a definition of Baba here before he, then he will describe the good fortune of its arising. Um, but any questions or reflections or comments from this? Don't get confused at the end. It mentioned uh, it means many things. Material. Yeah. What that means is that it, everyone has a specific emotion. 
like if someone's shopping, they're on a shopping barber, you know, they're, they're a specific emotion that they're expressing with the material energy, you know, they're shopping in Primark, they're on a barber, <laughs> they're, in a, they're in a certain mindset, yeah, so, but so barber means a state of mind, but also barber is a specific stage which is being described here as well, so don't get, if you are, don't get confused with that. It's used in a different, it's used in different ways. But the actual stage of Baba is being uh, described here. And there's many other, many points in here, perhaps. I'm quite eager to get, I think you might be eager to get the part where it's development and how it is developed is given. But anyways, we shouldn't rush through it un, um, un, unnecessarily. Um, I still yes, yeah. I still didn't understand this. It means the stage of ecstasy, material and spiritual emotions. I'm yeah. Confused with that. Yeah, that's true. No, don't get um Bhava Bhava means like a state of mind. Just put it like Bhava also means a state of mental disposition. Right. Yeah. Now the reason remember whatever it may be, and I gave the example like shopping, bar, yeah. barber shopping. So just, Maharaj is just is explaining the phenomena of barb that it's more than a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a state of mind. It's an internal disposition. Yes, got it now. Yeah, it's <clears throat> internal disposition. It's, uh, Maharaj calls it the religion of the mind, or he calls spontaneous devotional service is a disposition of mind. The externals may seem the same as a Vaidhi Bhakta, like both are singing Kirtan, both are reading Shema Bhagavatam, but one is experiencing actually emotions in relationship or is experiencing love. But it's all within the heart or we can say within the mind. So it's a mood. Right. Yeah. Well, Prabhu, uh, yeah. can I just ask you as well, please? Softening of heart, like yes. the stage of bhava is called bhava. So is it like bhava is like when uh, devotee is crying, feeling emptiness and hankering for him? That's what it means, bhava? Or is it actually, that's what, well, well that's, that is one of the, that's called the, one of the symptoms of astada sattva gabhav. So spiritual emotion, it does have effects on the physical body. So therefore, for instance, when, when the ecstasy contacts the water element within the body, then tears come from the eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, devotees cry. Isn't it? Any of you cried before? <laughs> <laughs> so we cry now um it doesn't always it doesn't necessarily always mean oh i'm oh this person is on the um stage of barber krishna gives special mercy and allows his sadhakas of uh, uh what's what um no um bhakti herself bhakti devi yeah to 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 encourage us Krishna in prayer was Bhakti Devi for us to experience emotions in relationship to Krishna. But at our stage, these emotions will come and they will go. Go, yeah. It doesn't mean we're necessarily situated on that stage. Yeah. And some people may be soft hearted by natural karma. Hmm. So they're apt to cry easily. That doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean that yeah, they're in Baba. Baba. Yeah. 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 I just remembered an, yeah. uh, the that you probably know it that Jai Dave um, told one time in class that he mm. used to cry while giving class sometimes, you know, he was, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, can hear. Uh, yeah. and so devotees started telling him off, like not to cry because, you know, <laughs> Um, 
it looked didn't look good. And then he took it to your, your guru, Maraj, because he's yeah. the godmother of yours, isn't he? Yeah, and yeah. your guru told him that it was Baba. So he was so happy. He said, oh, I was like, okay. So <laughs> really? yeah. you can't tell me off for crying anymore because they were insinuating that he was like Sahajia type crying. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he brought it to your Guru Maharaj, the, you know, situation. And your Guru Maharaj said, like, he, he was in the Bhava state. <laughs> Uh, I just I'd say that like devotees are on the Bhava stage. Yeah, it's a stage of devotional service which uh, yeah. which uh, devotees achieve. Like Prabhupada said that about Mother Jamuna as well. Now it doesn't mean that devotees at the stage will be crying 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> but generally at the, at the stage of Bhava, one's heart is soft so they will quite easily change when they hear and chant about krishna yeah a hard heart means whatever you you know whatever you're exposed to in regards to krishna in his pastimes there is no emotion yeah and that may be some of our that may be where most of us are at you know but the stage of bhava one's well, actually at the stage of bhava, one's heart is soft this again, we spoke of this in nectar devotion. So one is more susceptible, especially if the ingredients, well, there's different levels. You know, if the excellences are there, there's one level of ruchi or bhava where all the excellences have to be in place. That's the more immature. But when there's one's, one's at a more mature stage of bhava, then even if someone can't sing properly, even if the deities are not dressed nicely, they experience ecstasy when they come in contact with the Maha Mantra or they see the deities. Yeah, that's this. Yes. Yeah, so it's very, it's very interesting uh, subject. Um, devotees will have different experiences. And, um, but from this study, um, of what Maharaj often mentions is that what is that what we experience is a shadow. But a shadow is a good thing because 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 that means that, that the substance is coming. Yeah, that means the substance is coming. If if there's a shadow, it's 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 a good yeah. Yeah, and and in a devotional community. You're going to see devotees who will have and these different experiences, but let's see what time it is. Perhaps we will get there. Um, advice is given in general in page, actually, in the, the next page is that devotees in general will keep, as we mentioned a few times, they will keep these emotions hidden. They won't like to exhibit them. Yeah. And that's as that is advised by Norton Dastako. That's on the next page. All right. So interesting. Jaya Day has been, been <laughs> given a been given a benediction of Bhava. Whoever yeah. Mar was, well, Jaya Day was a very advanced soul. Yeah. He's a very deep person. He's a very yeah. he's got yeah. strong emotions for Krishna. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. So yeah, he was vindicated because devotees were kind of criticizing him, I think, at that point. Like yeah. for displaying his emotions. So um he took it to his Guru Maharaj and his Guru Maharaj said, oh. Yeah, I mean I've seen it quite often. Devotees given class, I've seen devotees uh, hide back hold back tears. If um if you don't mind me saying. Um, your Guru Maharaj, um, the Banga Latika, Bhakti yeah. Maharaj, he was giving class here once and uh, he got choked up. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, uh, I could see he was he was speaking about the deities. Wow. And uh, I, I don't know if anyone else noticed it, but but he, I could see he, he, was, he, he had to stop and take control of himself. Wow. And I've seen my Guru Maharaj as well many times. In a way, is that to take control of himself in order to carry on? 
chanting. You know? So these are these 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 are nat natural in a society of Vaishnavas, but in general, you're not going to see devotees crying all day, every day, all the time. <laughs> Because it's not, because generally it's 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 it, it's not the etiquette in the general. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Paravida, who's with us at the moment, he's often, you know, he often has to hold himself back. Yeah, he's amazing devotee. <laughs> yeah, so uh, amazing. Yeah. For him, you know, just um, just uh, just the other day he was giving class and see he went in a different direction. And yet to swallow and come back and find again, mm. continue. I've seen him a lot of time in Radhadesh when he did lots of performance yeah. there. You could see that when he was doing it. Yeah. yeah. Why is it? So it's a big subject. Um, and it says different, Barbara itself has different levels as well, different attainments, different levels. And um, again, it might often be Krishna's just giving encouragement, you know? Just, just give an encouragement. I'm sure we all have experienced that at some point in our spiritual life. Mm. So undeniable um, emotions towards the devotees or towards Krishna, towards the holy name. Yes, yeah, it's, it's natural. It's uh, will be there as we practice. Anyway, let's read on, shall we? Read a bit more. Let's. Uh, Anupama, do you like to read? See what jewels we can discover as well. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. This definition makes clear that Bhav takes place as a transformation of a devotee state of mind. When the mind or heart of a devotee is sorry, electrified by the combined uh, Lodhini and some with potencies manifesting from eternally perfect bhakti. Sorry, Bhav, ma'am, I've just lost the page. Can you just tell us what page you're on? 154, Prabhu. 154, okay, carry on. So, am I on the right page or am I on the wrong page? No, you're on the right page, just that I was okay. flicking rover pages, so I want to get back. Okay. So, shall I start from the top or? Yeah. No, just continue. Okay. Interestingly, while it is part that is ecstasy incarnate through the instrument of the mind, it appears as the cause of ecstasy. While in one sense this is the case, in another it is not. Bhav is both ecstasy and the cause of it, both cause and effect. In the domain of transcendence, such phenomenon coexist, while in the realm of mediocrity they, they cannot. The appearance of Bhav in the mind is aggressive. It takes possession of the mind. And while Bhav is self-evident because it appears in the mind, the indication is that it has arisen from it. However, from everything written in this chapter and those preceding it, that obviously cannot be the case. Of the two aspects of bhakti, those performed by the senses, Cheshta Rupa and those experienced in the mind, Bhav Rupa, Bhav Bhakti is of the nature of the latter, but because Bhav also results in acts of the senses like Nam Sankirtan, and because it is difficult to know the mental state of a devotee, it is difficult to ascertain a devotee's spiritual attainment. That difficulty is further compounded by the devotee's spiritual chastity, which impels him to hide his spiritual advancement. Narottam Das, uh, das Taku advises devotees in this way. In the matter of personal bhajana, be careful to keep your attainments confidential. If you do not, people will either find fault with you or be upset with you. Better that your inner heart remains distant from them. Considering these things, it is not surprising that Bhav is generally not visible in the conduct of an exalted devotee. Only in the case a devotee has lost control over his aesthetic condition would the assiduous observe and recognize a sadhaka's good fortune. Hearing this wonderful truth of Bhav Bhakti, one may be curious to know more and so ask, why does this good fortune arise? Why does a devotee receive Krishna's mercy? The answer is, in exceptional cases, mercy is causeless, but the general cases 
that it depends in reciprocation with the sadhaka's sincere effort and attainment. Sometimes scripture gives examples of someone who has not done any sadhana becoming the object of a great devotee's mercy, such as Narada converting a snake into a devotee. This is to show the potency of great devotees and the potency of their love. However, the same scriptures promote the path of practice and expect devotees to seriously adopt that path in order to attract the blessings of bhakti. To better understand how mercy appears, readers may again consider the example of how fire is started by rubbing together two pieces of wood. Fire is latent within the wood. So by the sadhana of rubbing two pieces of wood together, they become more and more illegible to catch fire. When does the fire take place? Or when does the first spark of fire appear? Similarly, Bhav is latent within the heart of all living entities, and one becomes illegible to taste that Bhav as a consequence of his sincere sadhana. But it takes divine grace in the form of a spark of Bhav, um, Surya Meshu to induce the power in the heart to flare up. It is the opinion of authorities like Sanatana Goswami that such awakening generally takes place while a devotee is hearing and chanting Krishna's name. That is because Nam Sankirtan is the Yugdhar and the ultimate benefactor of devotees. Sanatana Goswami says that the Lord's names and pastimes have a magical power to awaken prema. Once again, this magical power is the blessings that Krishna's names and pastimes voluntarily bestow upon the worthy recipient. Why does Nam Sankirtan have such medical effects? Because it is especially dear to Krishna. The Vaikuntha Dutas explain, dearer to the Lord than even his own beautiful form, his easily worshipped holy name benefits the entire world. Indeed, nothing is as full of nectar as the holy name of the Lord. So to the question, how and why does Bhav awaken? We have answered, such a divine transformation is made possible by the mercy of Krishna, his names, his devotees, or by Bhav itself. To be more specific, let us summarize what has been said so far and so elaborate on the answer above. How and why does Bhav awaken? Hey, perhaps we'll pause there. We'll pause there. Um, okay. We get the answer. Uh, so any um, observations? Any um, what observation? Any um, reflections on this? Questions? So it can come in different ways here. By the mercy of Krishna, the holy name, or his devotees, or by Barbara itself. So Maharaj given four different ways and means. Yeah. And also he mentioned that you get the example of um, a spark igniting a fire. Yeah. Mm. So Bhav itself evokes the Bhava in the sadhaka. Yeah, or the Lord's, or the ray, that's what described here, like, like a ray of the Lord's grace, like a spark touching a spark, and then it arises. Okay. Right, well, let's read on. Now I'm just going to do going to summarize the last few pages. Well, can I carry on? Sorry. Can I carry on? Reading? Really? Yeah, perhaps you can just read these two. Okay. okay, thank you. We answer. When a devotee seriously applies himself to the science of sadhana bhakti with the aim of attaining, attaining love for Krishna, his devotion, devotions purify his being and energize the bhav that eternally lives within him. In this way, he becomes a candidate for the mercy of the Lord. Can I just stop, can I just stop there? Because um, this is quite an important point to um, take note of. Um, so when we do sadhana with the aim of attaining love of Krishna, so that becomes our determination. And so that's pure devotional service. 
Yeah. If it's, oh, I want to chant my rounds to get free of suffering, or I want, I'm chanting my rounds because <laughs> I've been told to, you know. Well, yeah, in other words, like when we're chanting, we should, the, the idea is we want to obtain Krishna's grace and we want to obtain love. And if we want to, and we really want to, really, really want to, then that's the type of sadhana which will invoke Baba. But if we're just doing our religious duty of, you know, doing my rounds, and, and in the meantime, we're developing material desires, you know, we're doing our bhakti, you know, and then we're developing, um, say, we're developing anatas, attachments to matter, and we're increasing, you know, we're getting entangled or, you know, or we're becoming attracted to the material energy in some way, you know, and we're not making an effort. You know, it's not going to come for that type of practitioner. Yeah. So it's a, it's a protectioner who's that someone who's actually doing sadhana with the aim of attaining love for Krishna. That will that that will purify. Yeah. And then bhav will come from that particular practice. Now, if someone is practicing like mixed bhakti, we're speaking of now, where um, Mishra you know, Gana Mishra Bhakti, Karma Mishra Bhakti. It's not all bad, it's just to start. And if they associate with devotees, they will become less Mishra. They become less mixed. Less and less mixed. And then when the type of, then when it becomes, when it's not mixed with anything else, when it's unalloyed, when it's Sudha, when it's, uh, what's the, uh, yeah, it's uh, Sudha Bhakti and it's unalloyed, that type of sadhana will give rise to bhava and prema. Yep. That person is a candidate for receiving the mercy of the Lord. No? All right, I couldn't, sorry, I thought I'd jump in there and make that point because it reminds me of other points that Maharaj has made. But, uh, any comments on that? Otherwise, you can continue reading Mother Anupama. Okay. When Krishna, his pure devotees, or his holy names are satisfied with the sadhika's purity, humility, and eagerness for love, his asakti, then they bless him with their mercy. That means that love from the heart touches the heart of the sadhika and empowers his own path to burst forth, to burst forth and take full dominion over his mind and senses, elevating him to the stage aesthetic devotion. This is how Bhava awakens. And Bhava awakens because of the Lord. His devotee, his holy names, or Bhava itself, are satisfied with the intense desire and sadhana of a sadhaka, and are thus impelled to bless him in the way described above. This is why Bhava awakens. Again, Bhava appears by divine grace, when the possessors of grace are inspired to enable Bob's appearance within the accomplished sadhaka. Okay. Okay, we just pause there. All right, so that's a nice answer, isn't it? A nice succinct answer. Um, it expands on it more. Are we clear of what Marge is explaining here? Can we read that again? Uh, the Baba awakens. That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that one. Mm. It's lovely. It is. I thought the same. And, I've and, highlighted that. Yeah. And I'm afraid I've run out of slides now. I left. A, I didn't have time to make more slides. It doesn't matter much, but no. well, yeah. And Baba awakens from this point. Yeah, yeah. Please read yes, it. Please. And Baba it. awakens because the Lord, His devotee, His holy names, oh, Baba itself are satisfied with the intense desire and sadhana of a sadhaka and are thus impelled to bless him in the way described above. So okay. take yeah. note of this. So tiv, so, so tiv reina bhakti yogena. Has to be quite intense. Intense? Has to be intense. Yes. Yeah. So a japa has to be... Um, Focused. Okay. Yeah, uh, we can't be a sleeper japa. <laughs> can't be a sleeper japa. Like, you know, it's always the same in japa because I chant in the temple. Is always devoted to sleeping. I don't know. 
you know, I won't get into it. There's one person who sleeps every day. <laughs> Thank you. I, I upset um, one of them oh. yesterday because I asked her to get up early and chant her rounds better. <sighs> and they threw up the whole thing <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so, yeah. So, so, so like this much we can do. This is within our doing. We can be more in, more intense. Yeah. We could be more focused in the chapa. These things we can do. And again, I keep on saying it, Marjorie. There's chapters that describe how to increase our attention, how to increase our focus on hearing and chanting. And I'll we'll describe that in the next section. Yeah, to help. It explains the actual details of sadhana and he breaks it down and highlights um, the effects of not being attentive. There's a whole chapter called Attentive and Inattentive um, Bhaja. And describes, gives us all many tools and information to, to uh, help us. Yeah. Okay, let's have a quick look how many pages we've got. Well, let's continue, shall we? Uh, with Fahad uh, Karimov, we'd like to read. Anyone again, if you have any Thank questions, you. uh, Pesh for the Nimaipur, you've just joined us. If you have a question, you feel free to, but you have to unmute or don't. If you want to uh, so, actually, I was just listening, but I don't know actually what you're reading from which book is it. So, I... you don't know which book? <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> I thought you was asking yesterday, I told you. It's this book here. It's some, it's, it's a good job you asked <laughs> which book we're reading from. It's but called the Bible. You didn't know we're reading from the Bible? <laughs> no, I'm not reading. It's, it's this book. It's uh, Sankabu Komodi. It's um, uh, Shiva Ram Swami Maharaj's uh, latest book. Hey, yeah. you got it there? Yeah. So, Sankabu Komodi. Here we go. That looks yeah. like the Old Testament. Is that the Old Testament? <laughs> it's not the Old Testament. <laughs> Great, let's read on. <laughs> yeah, let's hurry over. If we reflect further, we see that in addition to the attainment of power, literally everything is Krishna's mercy. Even the illusion of materialists is made possible by the mercy of the Lord. What to speak of the liberation of his devotees? Living entities, conditioned or otherwise, are helpless without supreme grace. Everywhere and everything is evidence of Krishna's mercy. As Krishna says, I am the life of all that lives, of all that is material and all that, and all that is spiritual in this world. Know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. In a Vaishnava spiritual development, we see that he meets a guru and receives the seed of bhakti by Krishna's mercy. The seed of bhakti is nurtured and grows into a creeper by Krishna's mercy. The process of sadhana bhakti is Krishna's mercy. And similarly, the mature creeper finally bears flowers of bhava and prema, all by Krishna's mercy. In other words, without Krishna's mercy, a conditioned soul would have no chance for liberation. He would remain in bondage eternally. We see the example of Lord Brahma as the first created being who attained bhava by the grace of the Lord and the actual blessing that transformed the creator from a condition to a liberated soul is recorded thus in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yavan aham yata bhavo yadrupa guna karmaka tataiva tatpa vignanam astutumat anugrahat. All of me, namely my actual eternal form and my transcendental existence, color, qualities, and activities. Let all, the awake, let all be awakened within you by factual realization out of my causeless mercy. By Krishna's grace, Brahma received the seed of bhakti to the word tapa, learn the science of Bhagavad Bhakti and attain bhava. In the same way and by the same grace, we sadhakas may also realize the many stages and varieties of devotional service that is Krishna's guarantee. Ragadvesha Vimuktaistu, Vishayan Indriyas Charan, Atma Vasyar Vidya Yatma, Prasadam Adi Gachati. But a person free from all attachment and aversion 
and able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. And since bhakti is a divine potency that is inseparable from Krishna, it may also be said that bhava appears by the mercy of bhakti. Similarly, because that same bhakti resides within great devotees, it may be further said that Bhava appears by the grace of devotees. And finally, because Bhava is also an eternally perfect aspect of bhakti, it may be said that it appears by its own grace. The topic of divine grace and its descent will be discussed in great detail in the final part of this book, part eight. We must add that evidence of how Bhava manifests by supreme grace may be supported by how bhakti manifests in a similar way by the grace of Vaishnavas, even by the grace of neophytes. For example, we see how a non-devotee like Mrigari, the hunter, can be converted to a devotee by Narada Muni. We also see how in Srila Prabhupada's Krishna conscious movement, new devotees preach to non-devotees non and inspire them to take up bhakti. In both cases, the first of the great Narada and the second of the young preacher, bhakti appears from the heart of a devotee to spiritually transform a recipient by divine grace. Whether one considers the grace to be of Narada, the young preacher, Srila Prabhupada or Gauranga Mahaprabhu, it is a fact that divine grace and bhakti can appear through anyone and take up residence in any recipient. So it is with the appearance of bhava. To summarize, we quote the great Sanatana Goswami, to attain Vaikuntha, one must be favored with the blessings of bhakti. We should thus ally all misconceptions that bhava is created in any way. Rather, it is more favorable to consider the perspective of a great devotee. What is the perspective? Those who are absorbed in the perfections of loving devotion do not even think that the services they do are actions under their own control. Rather, they consider their every moment and service to be expression of Krishna's supreme mercy. In other words, Real devotees never see anyone as a doer. They simply see Krishna's mercy as the cause of all things. An example is when Narada's mother was bitten by a snake and he, a young boy, was left all alone. <coughs> Sorry. He, how did he react? Tada tad aham isa yasya bhaktanam sam ahis ahipsata anugraham manayana mana pratistam disam uttaram I took this as the special mercy of the Lord who always desires benediction for his devotees. And so thinking, I started for the North. In conclusion, Bhava is never created, but eternally exists. Its self-manifest appearance being accomplished by the actions of the most excellent transformations of the Lord's Swarupa Siktis, Ladini and Samvit. Let us close by embracing Jeeva Goswami's second and unequivocal words on this topic. Though this bhava is seen in the eternal associates of the Lord, the mental conditions of the devotees within this world become similar. By the mercy of the Lord and his devotees, by this mercy alone it shall appear. There is no need to elaborate further. Okay, Hare Krishna. Before I'll just let that reading run a couple of pages because we we'll come to the end of the chapter okay so perhaps we might stop there this week we've got only two minutes so next week we'll be going into part three so we're doing quite well so we'll be covering subjects introduction the agents of sankalpa like a two or three pages just into introducing the topic of sankalpa and taming the mind and empowering the intelligence, the transient force ego, and the sankhya of sankalpa. Now, I'll have to check, but because I did it some time ago, but I think I put parts of this chapter into slides. So it might be a bit of a different um, presentation that we do when we go into this chapter, because we'll have some slides. So, so that might help us to understand it a bit more. So I spent some time from one subject that Mars speaks about, I tried to put it on a slide and how it connects to the next part. So anyway, let, we, we've got that to look forward to. So anyway, thank you all for joining us today. <clears throat>
for this reading, a wonderful reading. Thank you. And tomorrow we're going to continue with um, sort of practice in harmony, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. We're going to continue yeah, with right. the story of back to Alex. Yeah. Of how he <laughs> goes through the different <laughs> stages of bhakti. So that we can tune in to see how it's going with him tomorrow. All right. So please join us for that. Okay. Def definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.